Hey guys, I am back here to do a review of DDT's Ryu Goku Peter Pan 2010. This will actually be the first DDT show I have ever watched in full, and when I say in full, I mean with the slight possibility that there may be a match missing across two different download links that I tried in order to watch this show. Um, as I understand it, the match that is missing, or maybe missing, is a tag team gauntlet that was supposed to be the second match on the show. I'm hoping that the reason it wasn't available to me is because the match wasn't televised. If that's the case, then obviously this review is full and there's no problem. But if, they're actu if that's not the case, and it actually is available somewhere, then I would appreciate it if someone down below in the comments would actually direct me to where the match is so I can watch it and see if it has any bearing on the overall rating I gave the show. So, just throwing that out there to kind of protect the integrity of my review in case it actually is flawed um, and actually does have a match missing. So, just pointing that out um, right away. But this will be my first DDT show, um, my only exposure to the company prior to this had been selected matches, selected matches that were intriguing enough to me to make me want to watch the full um, a full show. Um, in addition to that, I was interested in checking it out because DDT in some ways reminds me of Chikara, a company I really love. You know, are they one and the same? Definitely not. Don't think I'm clear claiming that they are. They're definitely not identical in the way they do business, you know. Um, Chikara is kind of like the US import of the Mexican Lucha model of business, whereas DDT seeks to be the parody of the sports entertainment model of business that American wrestling prefers. So there are definitely differences, but there are similarities too. Similarities that are um, notable enough to make me think to myself, I love Chikara, so there's probably a good chance I'm going to at least enjoy and like DDT. And overall, that is kind of the result I got from, from watching this show. Um, this show itself, Ryu Goku Peter Pan, is something of a phenomenon for DDT. A phenomenon that I don't actually have the facts behind, and I hope that someone can provide me with those facts um, after watching the review. Because this is a Japanese indie promotion that has never drawn more than 1,500 fans prior to going to Sumo Hall in Tokyo last year, a venue that is bigger than anything they would have attempted to um, do a show on before for last year's Ryu Goku Peter Pan and they went in and they drew 8500 people so I don't have the facts behind that I hope I'm guessing it wasn't just divine intervention that caused such a spike in attendance and such a spike in interest but I hope that someone can explain to me what exactly it was that was the draw of the show or the attraction of the show because I don't actually know and then you know this year they went back and they did the exact same thing again so um, I don't know what it is but it's definitely impressive definitely something that um, DDT um, has, has accomplished in a big way and this has become because of that one of their most major shows of the year and overall I thought it was a lot of fun I, I thought it was a good show not a great show by any means but easy to sit through and for the most part I enjoyed myself and definitely um, um, after watching this show, I would definitely be interested in following the product, with a, the product with a little more interest and watching some of the more major shows that come out um, in throughout the year because I thought this was fun for the most part. If it was this was supposed to be one of the major shows, um, you would expect it to be a little better than this, but you know, definitely um, major show does not, 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 does not necessarily equate um, quality. So I had fun for the most part, though I thought it was a fun show. So let's get let's get straight into it then. Let's get straight into it. Um, we opened the show with a six-person um, tag team match, and when I say six-person, I mean that in the broadest sense of the word, because there's not just male human beings in this match. There were also there was also a female, and there was an inanimate object. The inanimate object being a blow-up doll that I actually have seen before um, in one of the matches that of DDTs that I have watched prior to this show. Um, but the match itself was extremely extremely entertaining. This is ex this is exactly what I hoped I would get when you you know when you hear ddt described to you this is what you hope they do well you know the comedy where there's a lot of craziness going on but it does come off extremely uh, amusing extremely entertaining this is exactly what this was this was just exactly what i would have hoped for when i watched a ddt show you know there were a lot of championships involved in this crazy affair a lot of championships on the line and i don't know this for sure this is just a wild guess but to me that was kind of um, an attempt to poke fun at the problem that american mainstream promotions have with too many title belts so I thought it came up, if that was what they were attempting, I think they succeeded with flying colors because this was extremely entertaining. You know, a lot of good comedy spots and exactly what I would have hoped for. So, you know, to be honest, this show needed at least one more match like this. I would say that. The show needed at least one more match like this. Um, there was another match, you know, that tried to be comedic, but I don't think it came off nearly as well as this did. Although, that match, once we get to it, that match, I think, was one of the matches, the only match, I would say, that I didn't really understand. You know, this is a 
very obscure kind of product and yet, yet I thought this show was for the most part very easy to get into and nothing was hard to understand except for the one match that I'm going to talk about later um, but for a comedy match this was great you know I will actually hope that I can see more DDT comedy matches like this because I was really really entertained by this match as a whole you know the event the eventual winners of this um, kind of reminded me of an odd couple even though there were three people so obviously an odd trio uh, a woman an elderly man and a little person so it just came off so funny and I, I really really enjoy it um, a great opener great for an opener I would say perfect for an opener so definitely a good start to the show um, then we get to Tajiri versus Dick Togo this not a, lot, not a lot to talk about here. You know, Tajiri is still uh, nursing the injury that hindered him at New Japan Seoul. It's still here. It's still um, keeping his matches short. Um, while, it, while it lasted, this was fun. It had some decent action to it, but it really wasn't um, long enough to be anything of note. You know, I can't say it took away from the show. It wasn't a detriment to the show because, you know, it was short and was, it was fun while it lasted, but it just um, didn't really get going to anything extremely entertaining, so I can't give it, I can't give it too much credit. You know, two and a quarter stars. Um, fine for what it was, just too short. Um, then we get to a six-man tag team match again, and I say six-man because I'm pretty sure that all the people in this were um, male human beings. Um, again, a lot of craziness. It was still fun. Um, I think the fact that they went so over the top with some of the stuff they were doing here kind of made sure that it was either going to be a horrible match or an entertaining match, but it was either, going to be either one of those, and they went, they they succeeded in delivering an entertaining match, I thought, you know, it wasn't too long, but it was enjoyable while it lasted, there were some silly spots that were too over the top to really mark the match down for, because you can't take them seriously, that's what I'm kind of trying to get across, the best you can hope for here when you go so over the top is a entertaining um affair and this definitely was entertaining there was one crazy crazy spot where you know they were stacking chairs um over and over and over again and you know even though the end result of that was kind of um messy i would say um the fact that they were doing that just kind of kept you interested in the match the whole time they were doing stuff like that that kept you interested so you really can't say this was a bad match this was a boring match because it definitely wasn't boring they definitely kept you interested in some of the crazy stuff they were doing um so i can't give it i can't say it wasn't um fun to watch i'm gonna give it two and three quarter stars um fun Fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff. Then we get into, um, then we get to the disappointment of the night. The big disappointment of the night. We come to Naomichi Marafuji versus Kenny Omega. Um, this was an impromptu match. It was originally supposed to be, um, Marafuji versus Kota Ibushi. Unfortunately, Kota Ibushi had a shoulder injury that prevented him from taking part in the match. So we ended up with Marafuji versus Kenny Omega. There's some good chemistry there, or at least it sounds like a good match. It sounds like it could be a very good match. Um, we came out of this match with one more injury, an injury that prevented Marafuji from taking place in the ongoing G1 Climax tournament. By the way, when that tournament is over, I will be um, have doing a video recommending some of the matches from that tournament, because there's some very good stuff so far. Um, I'm looking forward to watching the rest of it. Um, but Marafuji could not take part in the tournament because of this injury that occurred in this match. Um, can't pinpoint the exact moment where Marafuji got hurt, but I would have no problem believing, and I don't know this for sure, but I would have no problem believing based on the action in this match that was that it was Omega's fault that he, that Marafuji got injured. It was Omega's um, fault because I thought Omega's offense was clunky and I thought it was uncoordinated, you know. Let's face it, um, Omega's gimmick allows him to be a little more unstable in the way he delivers his offense, but even then I think he was a little more, he, he's, he's usually more fluent than this, um, at least in the indie matches that he has in the States. So, I really don't know what was going on here. He definitely wasn't at his best. Um, and then even then, you know, the injury didn't seem to prevent Marafuji from doing much because even when it was very clear that he was um, nursing his arm where he got hurt, he was still doing some fairly, um, um, what I would say, risky stuff. He was still kind of um, being the Marafuji that we all know and love. Um, so they, so they probably still could have had a good back and forth match with some, with, with some clear storytelling. But that's not what we got. This was just a bunch of moves, um, one after the other, and that just, it just really did not get into um, a well executed narrative. So it was a, it was a supreme disappointment. Um, I understand the Marfuji got hurt, but even then, like I said, that didn't, that it didn't seem to be that serious of an injury that would prevent them from having a good back and forth match with some clear storytelling, some clear storytelling. That's that's not what we got. Um, just a disappointment, disappointing match. I would give it three stars. Some people might not um, agree with that. Some people might actually think it was better than that. But I really didn't enjoy this that much. I'm um, just kind of came off very, um, very much a mess. Well, I'm not gonna say a mess. It wasn't that bad, but it was still a disappointment considering um, the people that are in this one. They could have had a much better match, so 
Let's move on um, to the maths that I did not get. This is the maths that I did not understand um, very much. So I'm hoping that someone kind of kind of fill me in on what I was supposed to look at this match as, and maybe I can appreciate it a little more. Um, we come to Dan Shoku Dino versus HD and RG in a handicap match. Um, someone with more knowledge may t may tell me what was going on here, what the appeal of this was. I didn't really get it. You know, this started off as a comedy um, match, but I think it, it, some of the comedy was okay. I understand that um, Dino is like playing this character, where you know the homosexual character, where he does that kind of explains the man love in this match. But um, then the comedy went on to kind of the match kind of tran transitioned into being a match that was based on just work rate, just the just a straight up match and I don't think that, that came off very well in my opinion no it was still okay don't get me wrong the match itself was still okay I just didn't really get it and I hope that you know I think I need to know more about the build up to this and kind of what it meant to the um, to the fans I guess because there was there was, a, there, were, there was a retirement angle after the match that I didn't get because I really haven't been following so maybe I just was out of my depth for this one because I really didn't get it I still thought it was okay don't get me wrong I still thought it was okay for what it was just not all that entertaining so just Hopefully I can get filled in on what the appeal of this was. Maybe I can appreciate it a little more. Um, then we get to the main event of the show. Um, for the Open Way Championship, you have Daisuke Sekimoto defending against uh, Harashima. Harashima? Don't know what it's supposed to be. But this is a great main event. This is a great, great main event. Um, I would like to think of this as the as the polar opposite of the Marafuji Omega match. Because, you know, Marafuji and Omega was, was a lot of moves, but no substance. This match, not as many moves, but plenty, plenty of substance. A lot more meaning behind them. You know, especially with Sekimoto. Um, his power moves has the opponent um, takes the opponent from the mat and crashing back down in one smooth transition. You know, there's a lot of German suplexes like that, and I've seen other people do that before, but he seems to do them with um, a much more fluency than anybody else. Um, he's just he just he just seems to be a natural at doing that sort of stuff, and it's just very devastating to watch, and it definitely makes. Harashima's comeback all the more sweeter, I think. So um, by the time we get to the end of the match and he um, makes his comeback, and it just made me appreciate the end of the match all the more, I would definitely say this was a great main event. Um, definitely um, the best match of the night, and definitely worth checking out. I might actually put the link, the YouTube link to this match in the description box for those to check out, because this, this is worth checking out. This is probably the only thing on the show that was definitely worth checking out. Um, I think some people might like the Marafuji and Omega match more than I did, but um, this was definitely something that everyone can enjoy, in my opinion. Just a great main event, um, four and a quarter stars, I would definitely say. Um, overall, good show, solid show. Um, made me want to see more. Not a great show. Definitely, you think that with a show as major as this, it could be a little better. But I did enjoy it. I did think it was a fun show, and definitely maybe want to check out. I might actually want to check out um, Ryu Goku Peter Pan from last year. That might be my Latin as far as those. So later.